we look forward to it, and uh, we're phoning in Philly right now. So, oh, we'll, we're supposed to be. Yeah, and, we'll, uh, we'll get to him in a couple here. minutes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The uh, the the some some of the lines we'll be watching and asking about that have kind of moved a little bit. New England now fourteen and a half point favorites. Fourteen and a half. It's jumped a little bit. Um, there's some other ones. The uncertainty at the quarterback position for the Minnesota Vikings, uh, and we'll get to Phil right now. Hi, Phil Gray. Speaking. Phil Gray. It's. Uh, Mike Richard speaking. I can do that too, you know, lower my voice. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, buddy, great to have you on the show. It's Friday, which means it's a pick up palooza. We got lots to talk about, and this is the first time you've actually been on the show. Thanks for having me, Mike, and a uh, real pleasure to be here. And I also like your idea of, of maybe Nikki Newman sometimes making picks because you uh you you saw what Victor did last week though he was 8 for 9 that's pretty good against the spread <laughs> I still want to hear a Nikki pick Yeah so that uh <laughs> it's nice that you you're obsessing about uh, an imaginary uh, woman <laughs> don't know how things are going in your life <laughs> but let's take a look at some of those lines and maybe Dave uh, you talked about some of the line movement so uh Phil who's the that technically is the senior lines manager at sportsinteraction.com. Yep. Okay. So, so are there any lines necessarily as we go into the weekend that have moved a little bit, but you think might even move a little more? Well, you know, right now I'm looking at the boards and again, it's going to be the guys at sports that kind of tease me when I say it's a, it's a white knuckle Sunday. Again, we've got, you know, about, about nine games right now where we're going to be sitting on some heavy liability. Uh, Pittsburgh for sure is going to be one. Kansas City, we've already gone to three and a half. That was at three. Um, Oakland as well, I can see that getting to three and a half. Uh, the Denver game, for, for sure, is going to be the biggest liability across the board. For the, that opened at one, went to three, and we're now at three and a half. That could even be four. So we could see some sharp action coming in there sometime on Sunday, but right now I'm not seeing any of it. And it's kind of mirroring last year where you're not sure where the sharks and the publics are differing because uh, they seem to be piling on both sides again this week. Hey Phil, good to talk to you again this morning. Uh, I I noticed that in in the little intro there of some of the teams you're looking at, uh, you didn't involve the game of the week in my opinion. Atlanta at Detroit. This is a pretty damn good matchup in the Motor City, and maybe one of those matchups where we actually see if the lines are for real or not. Where is the money going on this game right now as we head into that uh, Sunday matchup? Looking at my tickets right now, and seventy five percent of. Uh of all bets are in Atlanta, but interestingly, the money is kind of split. So we're sitting again on, on a key number, which which we hate, which is three. And uh, I really don't think that is going to get off of three. I don't want to go there if we have to, but uh, we may see some late Detroit money, I would think, for sure, with the three on Sunday to hopefully balance everything. Well, looking at, the, and you mentioned some of those liability lines, um, you know, because I don't think Chicago's going to score a whole bunch. The number that I got this morning, so I made this at 714 on Sports Interaction, I've got Pittsburgh at minus seven. Now, as you know, not a great football number. That normally would make a lot of people nervous. The only thing that I think in that game, I just don't know what Chicago has coming back the other way. I don't think Pittsburgh has been necessarily played their best football after two games. At some point, uh, Le'Veon Bell and that first team offense has to do something. Now, in the world of, of lines and how they change, as it gets closer to kickoff, how does that money move? Is it the sharp money coming in on Pittsburgh at 7? How does that work in your world? Because a lot of people, quite frankly, Phil, don't know how it works or really don't understand what you do for a living. Well, Pittsburgh is is, uh, is historically one of those teams that the public just loves. I mean, there's other ones through their Dallas. Uh, Oakland is becoming one of them now. Um, Green Bay. Seattle used to be, and it's it's tough to get two way action on it because you get the casual better, the recreational better, which is who we cater to, um, who who will come in and and, and bet their faith. They think Pittsburgh's going to win. They love Pittsburgh to win. So the number kind of with FIA reflects that. Um, so you'll see them at seven and a half. I don't think that's going to get back to seven. I think they're going to pile all over Pittsburgh all day Sunday, and uh, I really would be hesitant to think that's even going to get to seven. Seven is is not as key as three. Uh, three usually comes in about 15, 16 percent of the time in the NFL. Uh, seven around ten percent of the time. So, if I have to go back to seven, I would, but I don't see it. You talk about three being a key number in that Seattle Tennessee game with the uh, Titans right now on your board at minus two and a half. Do you see that number jumping to the three, or do you think it kind of will sit under that field goal mark? 
and isn't that an interesting game? If you had the the preseason line at that, uh, that that was actually Seattle at minus three. So that that's been a five point swing in that wow. game. But right now we're seeing 50, 50, 50, uh, 50, 50 in the tickets and fifty fifty in the in the uh, in the money. I don't see that moving on to three. I think it's going to stay south to three, and you'll see uh, you'll see Seattle. We'll see some money for sure. Seattle money on Sunday, but I don't think enough. That's going to push it any farther off of two and a half, or any any significant Tennessee money that's going to get it to three. I think it's going to stay right there. Phil, last week on the show, Inside the Lines uh, on uh, Sunday after, well, Sunday mornings, we, we had the Sam Bradford uh, reaction as far as the board was concerned, and it, and it came out that. Sam Bradford was worth three and a half points in that game uh, last week. Uh, right now, you have Minnesota at minus two. Is it your feeling that Sam Bradford starts this game? And if Bradford, for some reason, walks onto the field on Sunday like he did last week and gets you know the the no go, and Case Keenum is in, are we going to see another three point swing in that as well? It's interesting. I mean, a number of even some of the sharp books have that book right off the board right now, and that exactly. opened at a pick. Uh, now, now, now we're at two. Um, that game could get on to three if he plays. Uh, we'll see. Uh, it, again, it, all the line moves you see across the board, either the sharp books or the square books, um, it reflects their liability and it reflects um, what's coming in at that time. It's there's really it's, it's not a, it's not a huge secret. I mean. When you see something move, there's there's some significant money, either public or sharp, moving it. No, isn't it true? I mean, it's sort of a, a I don't know if a, a truism or, or or fact, but generally, doesn't sharp money or the sharps who look at these things aren't they the guys who generally are in first or earlier? Not really. No, you're seeing it now, uh, especially especially in the last couple of years. No, they're waiting. They're waiting for some stuff to move and coming in on some of the late numbers. Um, it's it, you know it, it, it's kind of frustrating. Last year we saw we saw in the NFL um, some, some some questionable numbers coming out. You know Green Bay at minus three on a on a Sunday night, where you just knew the public was gonna was gonna pound on that, and they did. And and a lot of times you clearly can't move off that number. So uh, you know I'm not sure where some of the, the the Vegas opening lines are coming from. So I'm kind of booking on my own a lot now to our own liabilities, and you'll see at Sports Interaction that uh, you're looking for um, some off lines. We're certainly there. Well, that's what we're telling people, uh, Phil. It's uh, it's been a great uh, early association already. I love the site. I think the numbers are very fair. I think the ability for those recreationally to 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 play is is simple to follow. The logistics make sense if you're going to play in play. It also, uh, in terms of the the way the site works, I just tell people it's it is it is an awesome site. And it's and again, uh, when you start talking about a hundred percent of your bonus coming in, uh, I'm hoping that all the people that uh, watch and download the podcast and watch it on uh, on youtube that they do the same thing because honestly it's a very fair book well we appreciate that very much we have a great team here you know we've been we've been doing this for 20 years and yeah our site is our site is a uh, comprehensive and, and uh probably you know you can bet division three moldavia under 19 <laughs> women's handball live with us if you want uh, we've, we've we've got it all so uh yeah Sign up, and you know we have one of the best uh, crack customer service teams in the business, and uh, they're always happy to help twenty four seven. And did you say Stephen Rapp's been doing this for seventy five years? That's what I thought too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he already seems grouchy at all. Mike, you got that ten. <laughs> Mike, you got that ten. ten you got that ten teamer going uh, this weekend again. That's oh, Steve, Steve I was, do. Uh, sending me some screenshots. I do. You, you just missed it last week. Well, right? missed missed by one, but I'll tell you what, not missing this week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not missing this. No, because here's the other thing too. Because uh, you know, generally, obviously, on inside the lines, you're doing uh, 100% uh, NFL. I mean, if there's value elsewhere, I guess maybe you visit it. Uh, for me, it's 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 almost 100% uh, college ball. And people say, well, why why the square betting? Like, why always taking the favorites? And the reason that I, I say that is because there are so many schools and so many programs that in a given weekend. It is not that hard to find four or five complete mismatches. And as long as the football number in their world, not an NFL number, I mean, you're not looking at minus 27 and a half in, 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 in professional football. But when I see teams like Virginia Tech at home to Old Dominion, they could cover that by the half. So therefore, most of mine, almost completely, I'm not looking for the good games. The good games are harder to call, but it's not that hard to find, you know, Pittsburgh. 
Pitt at Georgia Tech, and if it's under 10 points, that's a gift to me, and that's why I won and win so many college games. You know, last week it was Seattle. It was probably stupid to take those points looking at it now, but when it comes to NCAA football, Phil, there's just a lot of really reasonable prices for teams and programs that are so much bigger than the, you know, the teams that are, are sacrificial lambs, I call them cupcake games, because there's at least 10 or 12 of those things at least every single weekend. NCAA football has certainly changed uh, since uh, over the last decade since, since I've been doing this. And I'll give you some uh, some insider info trading. David knows how generous I am, and uh, you know I get in trouble with my bosses for stuff like this. But do you want to look at some of those, those some of those big spread games in the NCAA? You know where uh, you've got you know 20, 25, 30 point uh, fades. Bet them early because you will see those lines yes. be six, seven, eight, sometimes ten points. So if you like, you know, uh, Southern Miss, uh, Collegiate Tech playing Notre Dame, and Notre Dame is minus 45, get them early because it's going to go to minus 52 probably. Yeah, and that's what I was talking about sometimes the guys getting in early because those are the kinds of lines in college ball. I, all these I've got relatively early, and I'm fine with them, and that's that's uh, that, that's a great point. Phil, thanks so much for joining us. As I said, uh, we look forward to a fantastic uh, relationship. Interesting stuff here this morning, and I know we'll ca- talk to you again next week. Thanks, guys. Talk to you next week. Sure. That is Phil Gray, and uh, he is the senior lines maker for uh, Sports Interaction. Just become best friends. Yep.